A very good morning and welcome to Study IQ, my dear friends. I am Prashant Mavani. I hope you all are doing good. Today is 2nd May 2020. I would like to start today's discussion with this quote by Lao Tzu. He who is contented is rich. If you have this sense of satisfaction in whatever you are doing, whoever you are, that will make you happy. Being rich is not just about uh, having so many things, having 50 cars or 10 cars or big bungalows. That thing will not make you rich if you don't have this sense of satisfaction. That is very important. So I want you guys to think about it. With this, dear friends, I would like to introduce all of you to our smart course. Now, this smart course is designed by some of the best faculties of our country. A few of them are there on your screen as well. Uh, this course is particularly designed for pre as well as mains examination. As far as payment options are concerned, you get uh, installment option available, right? You can pay uh, via EMIs and uh, to find out more about it, all you have to do is download this mobile application of Study IQ. Go through our mobile application and you will find all important details associated with our smart course. To download the PDF of today's lecture, check out my Telegram channel. Please make sure that you share this lecture, lecture video as well as PDF with other students. Hit the like button if you have learned something from today's discussion and please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Dear friends, we have four articles on our table. The first one is written by Health Minister of Taiwan. The second article is not from the Hindu newspaper but it is from Indian Express newspaper. And this article is a very important, very interesting article. So we are going to discuss uh, this one as well. Then the third one is written by M.S. Swaminathan. He's a very famous person in our country, associated with agriculture, he's associated with Green Revolution as well. So can you give me, you know, he is famously known as, M.S. Swaminathan is famously known as what of our country? Stick your answer in the comment section. And the fourth article, it's basically an editorial from the Hindu newspaper. So three articles from Hindu and one from Indian Express. Only four articles today because today is Saturday, isn't it? Uh, I have one question for you before we crack on. Question is that uh, you can see on your screen list of few pandemics. I want you guys to arrange them in chronological order. Taiwan's coronavirus protocol shows how it is done. This article is all about good things uh, that uh, or the best practices executed by Taiwan. This article, as I told you, is written by Health and Welfare Minister of Taiwan. His name is Dr. Chen Shi Chung. First of all, let us locate where you will find this country. I'm not sure whether I can call this uh, Taiwan as an independent country because uh, for that we can have a separate, a thorough discussion. But I'm going to be very brief here. India does not officially recognize Taiwan as a sovereign country. So this is the reason that we cannot say 100% that Taiwan is an independent country. At the same time, the way India deals with Taiwan, it looks like we are dealing with an independent country. So we have kept this thing in a gray area. So if I call China and Taiwan as independent nations, then please don't take it negatively. I'm sure no one will you because... Uh, we all are on the same page, right? Uh, our stand is uh, the stand what is taken by our country and that is India, of course. So anyway, let's uh, locate where you find this tiny island nation. So here is uh, Taiwan here. This is uh, China. In between you have this uh, Taiwan Strait. So here is, this is a proper map. So this one is China here. You can see Taiwan Strait here. Then on the northern side, you find East China Sea. Here you have a South China Sea, there you go, this is Pacific Ocean here, Luzon Strait is here, Taiwan Strait, and then you find this Tropic of Equator, is all, uh, beg your pardon, Tropic of Cancer is also passing 23.5 degree north line, which passes through our country, it's also passing through this tiny uh, country called Taiwan, technologically very developed country, and Taipei is its uh, capital, so... This article is about, as I told you, best practices of Taiwan and the things that we can learn from Taiwan. Now, to be honest, uh, all the things that we find, um, things that uh, Taiwan has done, at present they are not new. But then as well, it's, it's good and it's okay to go through them quickly. Now, Taiwan's strategy, Taiwan has been in a state of constant readiness 
to the threat of emerging infectious diseases because 17 years ago, Taiwan was hit by one pandemic. I'm not going to give you the name because uh, the name is here. Out of these five diseases, uh, one disease hit Taiwan very badly 17 years ago. And since then, Taiwan has learned its lesson. Taiwan has kept itself, uh, you know, ever ready for this sort of things. 31st December 2019, Taiwan began implementing onboard quarantine of direct flights uh, from Wuhan that same day. And uh, 2nd January 2020, after two, three days, uh, Taiwan established a central uh, zone or a central thing, a command center, central epidemic command center that is known as CECC. So CECC is a system in Taiwan. They have, it's like a pyramid, you know, you create a pyramid where command is coming from or the orders are coming from top and then you have to implement things at various different levels. So Taiwan did the same thing and at present, uh, in, despite uh, Taiwan is very close to China in terms of trade and tourism and other things, then as well Taiwan's rank is 123 as far as total number of cases are concerned, 123 among 183 countries, which is not bad at all. Taiwan has implemented dynamic plans like uh, you know, quarantining people and uh, fever screening, health declarations, 14-day home quarantine, all these things which are quite common now and we have talked about this sort of things many a time so I don't think so I have to explain each and everything to you because you know how it works. A uh, few things that we have already discussed about China and other countries like uh, here we are using this uh, Arugir uh, Setu app over there. Uh, they, this Chinese go uh, beg your pardon, this Thai uh, Taiwanese government, they worked with this uh, um, this telecom operators uh, and they were tracking people uh, you know their phone so that uh, all those people who are kept under quarantine or isolation they uh, they don't jump this isolation and quarantine and if a uh, few of them they tried as well and they were penalized so these are the steps uh, that were taken by Taiwan and then of course you have uh, you know massive testing facility Keeping keeping an eye on your uh, like basically surveillance and inspections, all these things, right? Uh, producing more masks, producing more PPEs. So these are all common things that uh, this country did, as you can see here, right? Uh, Taiwan uh, from twenty fourth January it uh, stopped this export of surgical masks and it started using it for uh, for its uh, citizens. Uh, they created this facility as well that if you want to order a mask then you can you can place it you can place an order online and then you will be, you will be told from where you can collect your mask and things like that now in this article you will find one interesting thing uh, at the end of this article uh, the writer or the minister is uh, writing that uh, taiwan has fulfilled its responsibility as a global citizen and it has abided by international health regulations 2005 ihr 2005 and it has uh, shared uh, the right numbers with WHO. It has uh, provided uh, uh, this uh, genome of uh, coronavirus. And it has uh, shared its uh, practices with other countries. It has been in touch with various different countries of Europe and other places. So Taiwan has fulfilled uh, everything that uh, uh, Thaila Thai Taiwan has fulfilled its responsibilities and duties. But then as well, Taiwan is not included in WHO. Taiwan is excluded from WHO. And I think it is because of China. They have this, you know, China claims that uh, Taiwan is part of, Taiwan is a state or a province of China. And uh, Taiwan is claiming that it is an independent country. So I think because of the stand of China, right, WHO has not accepted Taiwan as a country and it is not taking Taiwan on board. So that's what this article is all about. Now, we have a very interesting, important article from Indian Express, New World Order. Do you know that uh, 100 years ago, there was uh, nothing like visa or passport. You can go anywhere you like as far as you can purchase and afford the ticket. You can go to Europe, America and their colonies. Um, and then, you know, came this World War I. And after World War I, national boundaries became more rigid. And after that, you know, this whole economic uh, stagnation and uh, recession was also observed. Then we saw this rise of uh, nationalism and then it became ultra-nationalism. 
So the things that took place uh, during this World War Two, it looks like we are somewhere uh, near that situation. And if you see these global organizations, then they have failed as well. If we were talking about IMF and World Bank and UNSC, UN and other places or other institutions. Economists are writing that uh, or their their opinion is that uh, free trade globalization is will will end or we will see a sort of disruption as far as globalization is concerned Niall Ferguson American historian from Hoover Institution he calls this thing uh, chimerica chimerica is where you have China and USA together there was a time till now few years till you know from last if you go through uh 15 years maybe then you will find that uh, china and usa they were they were trading with each other they were quite close um, before 2000 usa and japan were very close uh, after 2000 predominantly you find china and usa becoming coming very close though they have this rivalry but then as well they were very close with each other they were biggest trading partner of each other and all these things were going on but um, just like coronavirus, you know, all of a sudden we saw this uh, cracks developing and then after Trump we saw this trade or tariff war and technological war is going on at present between both these countries. So this chimerica is more like uh, chimera. Chimera is a mythological animal that is quite destructive and things. So Niall Ferguson, he says that uh, this chimera will destroy the world or it will not destroy but it will disrupt the world it will it will change so many things and a uh, few of them will be very bad if we don't stop this whole thing that is going on as far as china is concerned many countries many different organizations uh, they blame that china is hiding the real figures and uh, Derek uh, Caesars, as per Derek Caesar he says that uh, there are some 2.9 million people affected in China and China is not showing the right uh, amount of this figure China is saying that they have some just uh, 80,000 90,000 people who are affected with this coronavirus so here in this article the writer is saying that uh, if you go back in the history of China then you find this three important principles and this three important principles are driving the China before 1949 when this Mao captured Mao Zedong when he captured this uh, um, this uh, when he took control of China uh, before that as well uh, revolutions were going on uh, in China and uh, when Mao came in he he prepared he prepared the base he said that forget about democracy first we need to uh, sort out some things um, in our home and after that we can think about democracy and things so later on China, we saw this Deng Xiaoping. Deng Xiaoping, I still remember his uh, statement. Uh, means when I say I still, I means I, I have read his statements and a uh, few articles uh, and a bit of history as well. So basically, he said to Chinese people that uh, we don't have to, you know, forget about fighting with someone. At present, it's not time to flex your muscles, right? At present, what you have to do is. Uh, you have to make money focus on wealth generation once you are wealthy after that you can do the things that you think you should do you know what I mean that once you have enough wealth after that you can you can flex your muscles and after that you can throw your weight on other countries but first let's make economic development the most important thing so GDPism is part of China then China centricism everything that is good is Chinese like Chinese is the best independence autonomy self-sufficiency they have this songs a song as well just like Janaganamana they have their own song of course uh, they have this um, grand and beautiful land of China over the mountains across the plains across the Yangtze and Huang rivers you know so this patriotism or this nationalism is is also there in Chinese people and then they have this Chinese exceptionalism. They believe that uh, they are the best and uh, they don't need other people's or other countries' wisdom. They have their own wisdom, they have their own logic, they have their own solutions. So it looks like China is behaving in the same way like Germany was behaving pre 
World War Germany or this Nazi Germany was something similar to what China is. And I'm not saying exactly, but uh, there are many similarities. And no one is stopping uh, China at present and no one stopped uh, Germany or Hitler. When Hitler occupied this uh, uh, Sudeten land, uh, a part of uh, Czechoslovakia that was uh, a portion where German-speaking people lived, when he occupied this place, when Hitler occupied uh, uh, Sudeten land, then no one stopped Hitler at that point of time. Means they were European powers, they were peasing Hitler. They were saying that don't do it and let's talk and things like that. You know, Britain, France, Italy, uh, they were celebrating this uh, Munich agreement. Hitler said that now he will not uh, go ahead with other, other, you know, there will be no further aggression and they were celebrating this thing. But in less than one year, World War II was uh, visible or World War II was going on or it began because Hitler started violating his uh, promises and in this article is saying that uh, uh, China will do the same thing or China is doing exactly means we can see a clear pattern back in 1939-40 Britain was a weak country at present as well you cannot say that Britain is as strong as it used to be there was a time when Britain was a superpower, but now Britain is not a superpower. In the same way, USA at present you can say yeah, it is a superpower, but it looks like the sun is setting. It's not at 12 o'clock at present, right? It's somewhere around 6 o'clock in the evening time. So they say that if uh, USA will go down, then China will. If they, there cannot be any vacuum, China will take over. China will grab this seat. So this article is suggesting that we need to have a new world order where you have countries, democratic countries like India, uh, America, Germany, you can also take uh, Japan, Australia. These countries uh, should form, of course you can add UK, France and other countries, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We can have these countries and we need to create a new world order. And when we say Japan and uh, America, and, or not Japan, but I would say UK, uh, France, America, other countries, then we have to make sure that uh, they are genuinely, uh, you know, they, they, if, if they are coming on board, then just democracy is not going to help. We want them to, this new world order, the pillars should be environment, healthcare, technology, democratic liberalism. This should be our foundation because we need to get rid of these old institutions. If we have to create new ones, then it should be more democratic. It should be more sensitive towards nature, towards healthcare, towards technology, towards equality. Right? We cannot have this this outdated. Uh, a vision or this outdated uh, isms uh, where you are just focused on filling your own treasure box rather than distributing it so these are the things that we need so from i think this was a very interesting article it's about food nutrition and livelihood uh, security all these thing, uh, three things are connected with each other now we need to understand the different dimension of food security in a holistic manner in order to address this problem in its totality. If we want to address this food insecurity issue, that we have to understand all different dimensions of food security and we have to understand it if we want to get rid of this uh, poverty, if we want to get rid of this uh, wastage, if we want to get rid of this hunger, malnutrition, other things. So here... A writer is uh, talking about three important things. The first one is associated with production, function of production or availability of food in the market. So if you can produce more than only, things will be available in the market. For that, using more chemical is not going to help. There was a time when we used to rely more on chemicals, but now we need to get rid of chemicals. We need to opt for more organic farming. This is something that we are expert in, means our forefathers, they have never used chemicals you know it was all organic farming but but still you know production is going to be a challenge but we can do it so organic farming farming is one thing because environment protection is one of the most important thing with this we need to increase as i told you right uh, quantity uh, of production should be more as well or it should be adequate enough that uh, prices of all these various different items they are reasonable there was a time when we used to import things from usa means not import i would say it was coming in as charity from usa 
food grains. But then came green revolution and now we are self-sufficient as far as food grains are concerned. But what we do need now is we need more processing of items. Uh, at present, because of this lockdown, you know that labor shortage is there. Then you have this shortage of input when it comes to seeds, other important items. You don't have it. Even if you have, if your crop is ready, then you cannot supply it in the market. But things are going to be more liberal from tomorrow, hopefully. Agriculture was exempted anyway, but this whole supply chain was not active. So farmers, they have faced a huge amount of losses. And this can create hunger and other issues in our country. So food processing is very important, right? Uh, we have to understand this thing. When I say food processing, I'll give you just one example. You might have read in newspapers uh, that uh, horticulture or this fruits and vegetables, huge amount of uh, these items, perishable items have gone wasted because they were not able to supply it to, we were not able to distribute it in various different parts of our country because of this lockdown so just imagine if you have proper cold storage if you have if you can take out uh, let's say if you have grapes then if you take out juice of these grapes you can store it in you know properly if you can store it scientifically and then you can sell this juice or this extract to various different companies uh, who will hopefully uh, run full fledged once this lockdown thing is over so it will add more value to your product you will make more money the money will come a bit later on maybe 15 days or 30 days after that but at least you will not incur huge amount of losses so this is something that is missing in our country second dimension is access to food if you produce enough that's not going to be uh, you know that's not enough Right, if you are producing good quantity, that's that it, it, it is no guarantee that everyone will uh, have enough food on his or her plate. For that, as well, we need to make it more accessible. Accessible means it should be affordable, it should be available, and uh, purchasing power plays a very important role. So, you know, when we are going through this lockdown thing, so so many people have lost their jobs, so they don't have money to buy food, but. We have this National Food Security Act and we can widen the food basket because just giving grains or just giving wheat and rice is not enough. It will fill your tummy but it is not healthy. Just that is not healthy for you. You need a balanced diet. So millets, pulses, oil, this should be given or it should be covered under this NFSA. As far as kids are concerned, uh, those kids who used to get uh, midday meal in schools, if they are of course, uh, schools are off these days, so money, uh, this food should be uh, provided to these kids at their home. They are, this was, uh, this is being done in Kerala. Uh, Kerala state is providing these cooked meals uh, to to these kids uh, to their homes. Uh, steps uh, should also be taken to avoid hidden hunger caused by deficiency of micronutrients. And then uh, this article is talking about job security. It is also related. If you if you lose, there are so many people in our country. If they if they don't earn anything, then they cannot eat anything. So we need to get rid of this situation as well. For that, uh, food processing will create more jobs. And we can expand MG Narega as well. It's a definition. Just unskilled worker. We can take some semi-skilled worker on board as well. For example, rice biopark. We can learn so many things from Myanmar. We can learn from our Amul model as well. This these things are these examples are creating huge amount of jobs in various different parts of Myanmar as well as Amul is creating jobs in our country. And the third dimension of this article is about absorption of uh, food that we eat, right? Utilization. And this will be possible when you are living in a healthy environment. If sanitation facilities are there, if drinking water, if you are getting clean, portable water. Uh, and other non-food factors play a very important role. Then only we can give this, get this food. Service. So all these things, production, distribution, affordability, then your uh, environment, right? your uh, non-food factors, all these things will, uh, all this holistic, means looking at this issue from this holistic point of view can only help us or else we won't be able to achieve food security. Just providing rice and grain is not going to be enough, as we all know. Last one is about recovering early. The health ministry has said that the percentage of recoveries currently stands at uh, just over 25%, which is uh, not bad, to be honest. Uh, 
matter of concern is about elderly people. They are, if they get infected, then uh, chances of them recovering is very bleak. So that's a danger zone as far as other people are concerned, right? Recovery rate is not that bad. We can learn from New Zealand as well. New Zealand has just unlocked a few parts of New Zealand and they have done this mass testing and uh, they have been successful in controlling this uh, coronavirus uh, transmission. Uh, death rate is also quite low in our country 3.2 percent if you compare it with britain and uh, belgium then it is somewhere around 15.7 percent still there are so many hypotheses some people are saying that it is because of india's climate some are saying that because of immunization bcg vaccines some are saying that there are other factors we don't know exactly what is working in favor of india but i think we are at present we are doing good right uh, 1.3 billion population world's 18 percent population and you are having somewhere around 30 40 k cases 40 k let's say 40 000 cases then if you calculate then things are not that bad but that does not mean we should take it lightly i'm not saying that at all we should be very vigilant but we are doing great if you if you see the number of people live in our country if the density of our population then things are not that bad and hopefully uh things uh, you know will get more good figures uh, as far as recovery and uh, controlling infection and other things are concerned then uh, we are here in news items dear friends uh, on your screen you can see a big list of uh, things that will be allowed uh, the nation has been divided into three or districts are divided into three colors red zones then you have orange zones and then you have green zones i want you guys to download the pdf of today's lecture and go through all these infographics right there are some important points i want you to go through each and every point i don't have that much time as you know to explain all this imp all this one one point but they are easy read and uh, one of my colleague uh, my pal singh Rathod, he has also uh, released a video last night which is available on our channel you can go through that one he has explained this lockdown 3.0 in detail on your screen you can see parliament uh, complex area the new one uh, is has got green signal from environmental ministry uh, maharashtra legislative council elections to be held on 21st may uh, prime minister meets ministers to discuss exit strategy and uh, kuwait offers to airlift stranded indian citizens and who raises concern over use of bcg vaccine and that's everything in uh, today's uh, discussion. Today is Saturday, tomorrow Sunday, so no Hindu analysis tomorrow. So as far as Hindu analysis are concerned, I will meet you directly on Monday. Daily financial news analysis, you will get it uh, today uh, before somewhere around 7 p.m. All right, uh, I'll try to bring it out as early as possible. So enjoy your weekend. God bless you all. Jai Hind.